Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com, host for Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth radio broadcast, and I am bringing to you information on the Los Alamos National Laboratory back in the news. As reported by Judicial Watch on July 18, 2017, that was the U.S. nuclear lab that mistakenly shipped radioactive material on a commercial plane. Yes, you heard that correctly. A government-owned nuclear laboratory with a lengthy history of security breaches is under fire once again for mistakenly shipping radioactive material on a commercial cargo plane. It marks the latest of many shameful scandals at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. Among the world's largest science institutions and the nation's key nuclear weapons research facility, the massive lab is charged with developing technology to reduce global threats and ensure the safety, security, and reliability of the United States nuclear deterrent. Judicial Watch has long monitored the Los Alamos National Laboratory and was heavily involved in exposing a Chinese communist scientist, Wen Ho Li, who stole nuclear secrets from the facility back in 1999. The Bill Clinton Justice Department refused to prosecute Lee because then-Attorney General Janet Reno claimed the accusations against him were racist. Judicial Watch represented the whistleblower. Nortra Trulock, responsible for launching an investigation into Lee's actions. Trulock was the Department of Energy's Intelligence Operations Chief, and Clinton administration officials defamed him by accusing him of being a racist to cover up Lee's repeated and embarrassing security violations. A multitude of scandals have rocked the facility since then, and Judicial Watch has closely followed the government's perpetual failure to adequately guard the lab's highly classified material. A few years ago, a Los Alamos scientist and his wife, both contractors at the facility, stole classified restricted data involving nuclear weapons and passed it along to a foreign government that's hostile to the United States. The scientist Pedro Leonardo Mancharin is a naturalized U.S. citizen from Argentina and his wife Marjorie, also an American citizen did technical writing and editing at Los Alamos. Both had security clearances and passed the classified material to a person they believed to be a Venezuelan government official. The scientist admitted selling the information relating to the United States national defense and lying to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. His wife admitted communicating restricted data belonging to the United States to another person with reason to believe that the information would be used to secure an advantage to Venezuela. She also admitted lying to the FBI. A few years earlier, Los Alamos officials sent top secret data relating to nuclear weapons via an open electronic mail network and police accidentally stumbled upon it in a drug dealer's mobile home during a drug bust. The highly classified information included details of the actual characteristics of nuclear material used in weapons. The 1,500 highly classified nuclear weapons designs were stashed in a trailer park near the lab, along with paraphernalia to manufacture methamphetamine. This was hardly an isolated incident, and in the late 1990s and the early 2000s, the facility became an embarrassment to the Energy Department. Revelations of theft, fraud, security lapses, and lax oversight kept Los Alamos in the news and led to the release of an Energy Department document labeling it a systematic management failure, unquote. The problem is not limited to Los Alamos. The nation's other government-owned nuclear labs have also experienced decades of faulty management, weak security, and lousy oversight. A few years ago, a federal audit blasted the government agency, National Nuclear Security Administration, or NNSA, responsible for securing the nation's nuclear weapons and facilities where they are housed. Among the probe's findings was that Los Alamos grants entire organizations or functional groups unauthorized access to nuclear weapons drawings, 
in violation of DOE rules at another New Mexico facility, Sandina National Laboratory, investigators found repeated instances of ineffective management of classified nuclear weapons drawings, a situation that could lead to unauthorized changes to the drawings. At the Pantex Nuclear Weapons Assembly plant in Texas, officials couldn't even find a chunk of the nuclear weapons that federal investigators picked from the stockpile for testing. Keep in mind that these are government facilities that supposedly operate with maximum security. The latest incident at Los Alamos was reported this month in a local newspaper article that says procedures were not followed when shipping, quote, special nuclear material, unquote, to facilities in California and South Carolina. The radioactive material had been packaged for ground transport the article states, but was mistakenly shipped aboard a commercial cargo plane, a violation of U.S. regulations. Quote, employees have been fired and other personnel actions have been taken, unquote, according to the story. Not surprisingly, officials at the facility declined to provide details about the actions against the negligent employees and downplayed it as a mix-up. One does wonder how a national laboratory who is in charge of things such as the uh, foil initiators, plutonium, and things of that matter, uh, how in the world that they could quote unquote accidentally ship radioactive material on a commercial plane. And one does wonder, is that plutonium? Uh, it does not state it, obviously, in the article, but we can see right here on their own site that plutonium is very much a part of the Los Alamos National Laboratory. And it's the Los Alamos Plutonium Facility is a unique and essential, essential national security capability, said McMillan. Now, this was uh, in 2016, September 2016. However, the issue is this. This just goes to show you one more time the illusion of safety, the illusion that the government will keep you safe, the illusion that we must give them more power so that they can protect us. But, of course, mainstream media wants you to be worried about the Trump-Russia connection and all of the fictitious stories and fake news that they've come out with. Lord forbid they actually focus on something that can harm the American people. How about let's stop with the fake news, let's get the real news out there, and let's start doing our jobs in the proper manner, or let's just abolish these quote unquote government agencies that are supposed to keep us so safe and secure. And as always, I will leave links in the description box below. Feel free to share my video, thumbs up if you like this information, and please leave comments uh, below the video so that I hear from you. I do enjoy getting those comments. What do you think on this matter? Do you think it is ironic? that as the mainstream media is reporting about <clears throat> how much of a threat, quote unquote, Russia or Donald Trump is, that they're not even letting the American people know that radioactive material was shipped on a commercial plane, possibility of harming the American people, but oh, that's right, wait a minute, that's not an outside threat, that's the threat from within. That's the swamp that needs to be cleaned out. We need to focus on the United States of America and cleaning out the, the uh, corruption that is here instead of being so worried and focused on everybody else and what their business is. How about we take the sty out of our own eye before we try to pull it out of someone else's in another country. And as always, watch your backs, check your facts. Semper Fidelis and have a wonderful night.